Welcome back to another episode of the Arc Switch Survival Guide. Today we are going to teach you all about the Spinosaurus in Arc, and most importantly, we are going to show you how to tame a Spinosaurus in Arc without dying. We will show you a very easy way to tame a Spinosaurus, and we're going to do it without getting a scratch on us, if you can believe that. But be sure to watch the rest of this episode, and we'll show you exactly how we pulled this off, and we're going to teach you all about the Spinosaurus. Now, the Spinosaurus is just a crazy dino. It's like a water rex, and these things can hold up against a T-Rex in a fight. They can do about as much damage, they just have slightly lower health but they're actually a lot faster, and they can be pretty well aquatic. They're also one of the absolute fastest ways to get fish meat in art. Now, when I say this is an easy tame, that is a relative thing with a Spinosaurus, because most of you know they are crazy dangerous, and we are going to have to tease this thing and have quite a few brushes with death on the way. But once we successfully lure him into our taming pen, it is pretty much a piece of cake to tame this guy. We'll just lock him in remotely, and then we can shoot down on him and trank him from about three stories out of reach. So this will be a pretty easy easy tame, all things considered. And as an added bonus, if you watch this whole episode, I'll show you a really helpful trick where you can use a frog or a scorpion as an emergency tranquilizer to keep a dinosaur unconscious if you run out of tranks. And if you watch this episode until the very end, you can find out if I stupidly let my brand new Spinosaurus die from being attacked by a bunch of jellyfish. So be sure to watch this whole episode, it should be quite helpful and very entertaining. Now I'll start this guide on how to tame a Spinosaurus in Ark with how to find a Spinosaurus in Ark. Now these are all of the locations where you can find a Spinosaurus on Ark Switch. This is the island map, and you'll notice that every square here, which is a rare spawn point, is along a river. So just about any river that's a nice clear river, you can find Spinosaurus. They don't spawn in the swamp, thank goodness, there's enough dangerous stuff in there already without a swamp or rex. But my main base is right here at about 8050 in this cool little plateau. But right below it is a great spot to find Spinosaurs. When I first came up here, I had to fight one off with my raft fortress. And then when I went a little bit north, I found another one up here, which I had to fight on my way to the swamp. So it's a great spot to find them if you're not looking for them. But uh, thankfully, we're going to try to find one right up here on this northern square. Another spot I usually see Spinos is right around here, which happens to be right next to the default spawning place in South Zone 1. So a lot of people spawn on this little peninsula right around this area, and one of the most dangerous things about starting in this area is eventually, a lot of times, one of the Spinosaurs will spawn and wander all the way down the beach and just kind of mow down your base. They're really dangerous. So keep an eye out if you build there. You will definitely see them coming. They are big. But the general rule of thumb is, if you're looking for a Spino, they can be hard to find, but if you're not looking for them, they'll find you. Now the good news is, before I started this episode, I went on a scouting expedition and I did find a really cool female Spinosaurus just to the north here. So we're going to get ready to tame that guy, and before I started this episode, I also added a couple additions to this taming pen, like these ladders going all the way down into the taming pen, so that should be pretty helpful. Now. Now, on the last episode, I taught you how to use the remote control keypads to open the doors from a very far distance, and we'll actually be using that to slam the doors shut without getting ourselves killed in the process, because you have to get way too close to a very angry Spinosaur if you want to slam the doors.
doors shut again. So that's going to be really helpful. And if you did not see that episode, check out the link in the description. It's a really good idea to watch that because it'll really help you if you want to make a good taming pen, especially if you want to tame big dangerous dinos like the Spinosaur. Now I am crafting the uh, Trank arrows as I go because I don't want to use up all of my narcotics. I'm probably going to use most of them to keep this dino unconscious because it'll take a lot but I can actually make them on the fly using the hot bar right there. So a little bit north of my base is where I spotted this female Spino, and there she is. And it also looks like she's killed pretty much everything around here, which is helpful in this case. And man, check that out. That's a real beauty. So she's got this cool purple spine, and I love her black coloring. That's just an awesome looking Spinosaur. So the uh, version of Ark that I'm playing on PC is a few versions ahead of what you guys have on Switch, and I've actually got a decent chance of wild dinos spawning with cool purple, red, green coloration like that. So it's pretty fun. And okay, I gotta make sure she doesn't get too far into the swamp. This is gonna be the really tough part. Now the most important thing is I've gotta keep an eye on my stamina with this guy because a Tapehara can run out of stamina reasonably quickly and I wanna get just, oh there, nope she's mad, okay. Just close enough to get her angry and she's really big so I've gotta stay reasonably high up in the air to make sure she doesn't kill me because these things are crazy fast, look at that. I mean she's already already covered like a couple blocks of distance and uh, you know that was in just a couple of seconds. Oh man she is angry. She can see me from pretty far away too. Now you can see why I do not want to tame this thing from the ground. Even with something fast like a frog, I'm not sure I could outrun her and still survive. And these things hurt like nobody's business. They can actually rival the DPS of a T-Rex, and they can attack a lot faster. So I'm having to rest often on these cliffs. Oh my gosh, okay. Yeah, she's still mad and she's still aggroed on me, but thankfully I was on top of the cliff and far enough away not to get attacked. Oh boy, okay. This thing is crazy. So she's going to make a great pet if I can finally tame her, but she is an angry, angry dino. Now you'll notice sometimes she runs on all fours. Oh, there's a little Dilo over there, but I'm not too worried about him. Sometimes she runs on all fours, and sometimes she rears up on her hind legs and just tears things apart with her claws. Now, it's a cool feature that'll be really handy once we get her tamed, but she is just going to town on that turtle. Those things have crazy high defense, but uh, I mean, I've even seen a turtle take down a Tyrannosaur before just by sheer high HP and lasting longer than the T-Rex. You know, I think I'm gonna rest up here for a second while she's taking out that turtle, because it's gonna take a minute even for a Spinosaur to take that turtle down. Well, uh, maybe not, actually. It looks like she has ripped that thing up really fast. That's crazy. I've never even seen a T-Rex take one down that quickly. So she's going to be a pretty nice tame. Now, level 40 isn't, like, max level or anything. I've been taming most of my really good dinos at pretty high levels, but uh, she's going to be still pretty nice once we get her tamed up. And let me see. She's not aggroing because she can't see me, but... Yeah, there we go. Okay. I didn't actually bite her, but I got close enough to smack her on the backside, and she is really ticked off. Oh yeah, okay. That is one angry dino. Alright, is she coming here? Whoa, okay. Sometimes you can use the terrain a little bit to your advantage to keep a uh, Spino from attacking you, but rocks are the only thing that works because uh, even though they're crazy fast, they can sometimes get hindered a little bit by boulders, but they can actually knock over trees just by walking into them. So you cannot trap a Spino using trees. Come on, I'm over here. Look over this way. Oh boy. Okay. Now, nope. yep, there she's mad. Okay. This is a pretty dangerous thing that I'm doing here, and one of the reasons I'm using my Tapehara, aside from the fact that it's really maneuverable, is I wouldn't be too sad if it died. I've got like five male Tapeharas that I'm not really using. Oh gosh, she is angry. Okay. Let's see if I can get her in here. She's got a slightly slow turn radius when she's on all fours, but it gets better when she's on two feet. Whoa, okay. Yikes, that was close. 
Uh, looks like she's having a little trouble getting in here, so let me see if I can rest for a second, because I'm almost out of stamina again. Oh man, she moves fast. That's crazy. Just took her about a second to go all the way along the length of this taming pen. Looks like she's coming inside. Oh, okay, cool. Let me get there and see if I can slam this shut really fast. Okay. So, we are going to use this to uh, close that main door. i got to deactivate close, and 1111 is my code for that. And let's see if we pulled this off fast enough. Is she inside? Looks like she is. Okay, cool. Perfect. We've got her trapped inside the taming pen. Now, she is so tall, she can almost reach over these dino taming pens. This is crazy. But I'm going to see if I can get her to squeeze into this little gate here. I think it might be too small for her to fit. Whoa, she's mad. Okay, come here, come here. But if I can get her trapped into this little tiny area here, then it'll be really easy to tame her because she won't be able to move at all. But I think this is probably not going to work. Whoa, she's mad. Okay, that was close. Whew, all right. Well, we made it without getting a scratch, and I think I'm going to keep it that way because she looks like she is too big to fit inside a normal stone dinosaur gateway. So we'll be right back, and I'll finish knocking out this Spinosaur from complete safety at this cool little sniping platform, and then we'll show you some cool tricks for how to use a frog to keep this thing unconscious. And we're back. So let's see if I can knock out this Spino here. And uh, I've got a pretty clear shot. I can see pretty much the entire taming pen from this little sniping post that I set up. And we are really high above this thing. So high we are out of aggro range. And she doesn't even know what she's fighting. She's looking the other direction and just kind of sitting there in the corner. Now you'll notice that little corner there, I actually put an extra dinosaur gateway. And and that kind of pins her into the corner if she walks too far that direction. And then the little taming pen segment on the right blocks her from that side. So I'm trying to kind of keep it so dinos stay in that area when I'm taming them from this taming pen. Now if I need to get closer, I've got a nice little ledge on the right hand side. And I've got a little sniping platform just below me on the left too. So if I need to move, I can do that. And I'm going to try to get some headshots going so I can get more tranquilizing effect. Now with most dinos, I avoid shooting the head, even though you get better tranquilizing effect when you do that. But Spinosaur is so big, it's got a lot of health. And now she's actually running away, which means she's got about 25% left before she goes unconscious. And I'm still shooting pretty frequently. I usually leave a little bit more time between shots to get the maximum tranquilizing tranquilizing effect, but I'm a little bit worried she might actually be able to glitch her way over the taming pen. Perfect. She is down. All right. So let's see how we did here. It looks like she's pretty well unconscious. And I'm just going to check and see how fast her torpidity goes down because it goes down reasonably fast on a Spinosaur. And you can see here it's already dropping pretty rapidly. So she's losing about five torpidity per second, which is pretty fast. This makes me really happy. I got about a thousand narco berries. So I'll make more narcotics when I get back up to my base. Now I grabbed a bunch of food for this Spinosaurus and I'll show you that real quick. I like to start by putting a lot of regular meat on its inventory as a backup because meat is the least effective thing to tame a Spinosaur, but it'll definitely work. Now prime meat is more effective and I've got a bunch of that using a cool trick which I'll put a link in the description of this video for how to get that. But that's the next best way to tame a Spinosaur. Now I've also got some exceptional kibble and I used the Therizinosaurus eggs for most to that. I also picked up a brontosaurus egg here and there back in the day, and I've still got those in my fridge. So I was able to make about four kibble, which should be enough to get this Spinosaur about 80% tamed just using the kibble. And I'll put a link in the description for my video on how to make all of the kibbles using the new Arc Homestead kibble system. Now, if you're still playing on Arc Switch or Arc Mobile,
kibble, you'll need to use Argent Avis kibble. And I'll put a link in the description for how to use that too. There's a whole set of recipes for all of the old kibble system. So throughout the tame, I actually picked up a Therizinosaurus egg, which is what I'm using to make most of the exceptional kibble that I'm using for this tame. It looks like we've got an Ankylosaur egg too, which is great. So. I'm going to show you another trick which can be really helpful using a frog. Now a lot of times when you're taming something really big and dangerous like this Spinosaurus, you can run out of narcotics to keep it unconscious, and if that thing wakes up, you've lost all of your hard work and you are no longer able to tame that guy until you knock him out and you basically have to start over again. So if you are in a pinch and you run out of tranks, you can actually actually shoot it again with tranquilizer arrows and it'll do a little bit more HP damage. But here's another great trick you can use in emergencies. Now if you take a look, the torpidity is in the 1700s and its health is about 1500. But if I hop on this frog or use a scorpion, which also has a tranquilizing attack, then you can continue to inflict torpidity. So it was about 1600 torpidity. And as you can see, it's going back up really rapidly and we're getting back into the 1700s. So if I repeatedly attack the Spinosaur, even though it's unconscious using my frog, it will keep increasing its torpidity gauge. The downside is, if you look in that little box right below its icons, you'll see taming effectiveness is 87% plus 18 levels. But if I attack it again, it goes down to 82% and now it's only plus 17 levels. So the more damage you do to an unconscious dinosaur, the lower its taming effectiveness gets. And now we're down to level 16. So it's really worth it to go ahead and get that taming effectiveness as high as possible. Only use this trick in a pinch. But you can see here, we've gone a long way towards getting this guy back to max torpidity. So if you're about to lose a tame, feel free to use tranquilizer arrows or your frog to continually inflict more torpidity and damage. And it's better than losing a tame, but use that as a last resort because it's much better to tame it up using the maximum taming effectiveness. And if I can tame this with mostly kibble, I'll gain about 15, 16 levels, which is really helpful because it takes a while to level up that dinosaur that much. So even though this frog tranquilizing trick is really helpful sometimes, definitely use that only as an absolute last resort because you want to get that max taming effectiveness if at all possible. Now you may notice I added a wall at the bottom of my taming pen and that keeps dinos from getting into this little nook where they'd be below the cliff and out of my line of sight. And it also helps my frog to be able to jump out of the taming pen in emergencies. So we'll be right back and then I'll show you how to make a Spinosaurus saddle and how to ride and use a Spinosaurus in ARC. And we're back. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my engram list and pull out the Spino Saddle, which is learned at level 71. Now you can jump straight to an engram if you type it out in the search box, which saves a lot of time. Now a Spino Saddle is a high level saddle, so it doesn't do you a ton of good to tame a Spinosaurus at a low level. It's not like the Therizinosaur, which you can use it constantly even before you can ride it, but it's still a pretty darn good bodyguard so uh, if you can safely tame one go for it but be careful they are crazy dangerous and they will kick your butt if you try to tame them without a taming pen so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the materials that I need and it takes quite a lot of cementing paste hide fiber and some silica pearls which is kind of hard to get your hands on but I've got a great trick where we can get tons of silica pearls using an otter or using beaver dams, which I'll put some links into the description for how to get those if you need them. Now you craft the Spino Saddle in the smithy and that's gonna use up most of my resources for using that saddle. So that's another thing you wanna make sure you can actually get the resources to make the saddle before you tame a Spinosaurus. So jumping ahead, we are back down at the Spino, which is 
just about finished taming. It's still dropping torpidity quickly, but it is at 98% tamed. So the last bit of taming I think we'll be able to do with the uh, prime meat, and it should finish taming in just a second. So check out the color on this thing. This is just a really cool looking spino, even though its head is completely inside this cliff. Yeah, that's just, yeah, that's, that's awkward. But look at the claws on this thing. I mean, you wonder why these things do so much damage. Their claws are like as big as a person. Check that out. This is one nasty dino, and you do not want to fight with one. They're kind of cool, too, because they've got like fins. They're almost like an amphibious T-Rex. So this guy should actually be taming up at any second now. Should be just about, oh, there it goes. Okay, cool timed that pretty well. Now I'm just going to name her Spino for now, but let me know if you guys have a good suggestion for the name of this Spinosaurus. She is like this crazy midnight black with a really awesome purple sail. I mean, that's an awesome looking dino. So drop a comment and give me some suggestions of what you'd like to see this dinosaur named, and I will definitely keep an eye out and decide on my favorite one. So I'm going to put the saddle on her saddle slot lot there. And we now have a crazy Spinosaurus who is ready for action. So before I do anything, I'm going to take my Tapehara back up to the top of the cliff where it is nice and safe. And then we'll take this Spinosaurus out for a joyride and show you all the cool moves it can do. So also off camera, I didn't want to do a whole episode just building ladders, but I put some ladders going up and down the cliff side here, and that'll make it really easy for me to access this nice little cliff right here, which I can use to snipe most dinos in the taming pen. But this Spinosaur is so big, I wanted to be really far away from it so it would just stay on the other side of this taming pen, because it's crazy. So check it out, we are finally able to ride our Spinosaurus, and this thing is just nuts. These things can do tons of damage. So I'm going to open and close this door here, which, uh, you know, I think I can do without jumping off of this thing. There we go. Now, if I click the left stick, I can sprint, and I just ran over a dodo and killed it. I stepped on that dodo and it's dead. This thing is crazy. It's also smashing trees and wood and all kinds of stuff just from running over it. So a Spino at full sprint can actually knock down whole forests without much trouble. Now a really cool thing about a Spinosaurus is you can see there's a buff at the top right of my screen. It shows a little movement speed buff. Now that lasts for 30 seconds any time I touch the water. And you can also see this piranha is coming towards me, but it's not actually attacking me. A lot of things will not even attack a Spinosaurus because it's so big. And most smaller predators like raptors and stuff like that, you can just walk right past them and they won't even mess with you, which is pretty helpful. But this thing is great for killing fish and piranhas. It can just use its regular right trigger attack and it has really fast attack speed. But this gets increased every time they touch water. They have a water buff that gives them 20% movement speed, 15% attack damage, and 25% health regeneration. And that lasts for 30 seconds every time you touch the water. Now another cool thing about a Spinosaurus is the left trigger will make it rear up on its back legs. Now these are new things that were added in the TLC patch, but with its two-legged stance, a Spinosaurus actually has drastically increased attack speed and turn radius, so it's a lot better at fighting things if you're standing on two legs, and that's buffed even further if you're in the water. So Spinos can be quite a force to be reckoned with if you do that. Now you can switch back to four-legged stance, which uses less stamina and makes you go faster when you're running. So it's a good idea to be on four legs when you run and then two legs when you're actually fighting in combat. So if you can master changing stances like that on a Spinosaurus, it gets really good. So one of the reasons I brought my Spinosaurus down here is because they are really good 
like collecting fish meat. We've got some coelacanths down here and I am just going to attack them and just take them out. Like see how fast those things die? And you get a lot of fish meat when you attack them. Now they actually have a pretty good harvesting quality for fish meat and prime meat. So they're definitely great for just harvesting right there. Now I've got some uh, jellyfish down here and I'm going to see if I can get some biotoxin from these Nidaria. Now, I don't want to get too close to them because they can stun you and knock you off your mount. But I'm curious if a Spinosaur has large enough attack radius that I might actually be able to hurt them from a decent distance. But let me go ahead and add my regular arrows to my crossbow and it looks like they're actually pretty deep out there. Now you kind of lose perspective when you're riding on a Spinosaurus because it's so big that you actually are riding from a couple stories high. So even though they look really far away when I'm on foot, they actually look pretty close on this Spino. So let me hop off this guy and see if I can shoot these things down. I just want to get them a little bit closer to shore because if I can hit them, they should aggro onto me and start chasing me. Now, if you missed the episode where I showed you how to get biotoxin, it is incredibly, oh, oh that's not good. I, I got knocked off my Spino. This is not good at all. So he is stunned. I cannot ride him right now. And if I get too close to these Nidaria, they are going to shock me and put me unconscious too. Oh boy. Okay, not cool. I also have to make sure I don't hit my own Spino in the legs because I could actually hurt it pretty badly. Oh gosh, and there's another one coming. Whew, okay, took down those two, and let's see, is that one attacking me? No. Okay, let me get this Spino to come back over here as fast as possible. Yikes, that was really close. Okay, well, we almost lost our brand new Spinosaurus. That could have been really bad. And apparently when he's following you in the water, his... Oh gosh, there's another one right next to me. Yikes. So apparently when they follow you in the water, their nose is so big you cannot mount their saddle, so you gotta come around the front. All right, this thing can barely move because it has so much torpidity inflicted on it, but uh, I think we're gonna be okay. That was close, man. So, let me tell this thing to stop following me, and let's see if this third Nidaria is close enough to get it to come to shore. Now, if you're fighting jellies, well, you can just use a crossbow to get them to come after you, and then you can safely get out of the water before they get too close, and then you can just shoot down into the water and hit them. So I should be in pretty good shape. Looks like it's running away now. Okay, great. So if I can just knock this thing down the rest of the way before it gets too far out to sea, Perfect. I now have three jellyfish that I can collect. And I got one of my arrows back. Great. So now we know. Stay away from the jellyfish when we're using our Spinosaur, but I am going to increase its health because it can get pretty decent health. It's not quite T-Rex level health, but it's pretty close. And I definitely want to make sure this thing does not die, especially if I'm fighting stuff in the ocean. But check that out. We got like 70 biotoxin just from two jellyfish. And I'm going to harvest this other one too. So yeah, we've got like 100 biotoxin already. And that's going to be really helpful because it's about twice as effective as using narcotics to keep things unconscious. So we'll use that next time I tame stuff. I've probably still got some in the fridge in my raft, but it's pretty far away. So I'll show you some more cool stuff where I'm going to go underwater and actually harvest some oil down at the bottom of the ocean using my Spinosaurus. They are actually pretty darn good in the water, and if you boost their oxygen stat, they can be almost as good as a fish, like a shark or a water mount, and they can actually fight off megalodons pretty well. So be sure to watch the next episode and we'll do some underwater combat with this Spinosaurus and show you how well it can do in the water too. But for now, I'm still boosting its health because I do not want to lose this brand new Spinosaurus like I almost did to those stupid jellyfish earlier. I would have kicked myself if I went through all that trouble to tame this Spinosaur and then immediately lost it. Yikes. But I was running pretty low on fish meat before I got this Spinosaurus and now I've got enough to keep all of my ducks and otters happy for a really long time.
and I'm gonna head back up to the base and I'm going crazy fast because I'm on all fours and I still have the water buff even now but I'm gonna go in this giant behemoth stone gateway because it is just way too big to fit inside the smaller stone gateway so I'm glad I have this set up it was worth all the materials and I'm walking on two legs now because it's a lot easier to maneuver even though it uses stamina a lot faster and check that out this thing is huge it's about as tall as my entire base and uh, when it's on two legs it's even taller than the brontosaurus is back this thing is crazy so that is most of what you need to know about a spinosaurus and we'll do a little bit more with this guy in the next episode and we'll show you some of its cool underwater abilities so i hope this episode was helpful and showed you the easy way to tame a spinosaurus in arc and i highly recommend only taming one if you can make a taming pen like I made and be sure to check out the links in the description for how to build this and please like this video if it was helpful and drop a comment let us know if you have any questions or any tips for using or taming a Spinosaurus in ARC. I know a lot of you have a lot of great feedback so I always love hearing from you in the comment and if you haven't subscribed yet you totally should and be sure to ring that bell for notifications because I release really helpful videos every couple of days and you won't want to miss some of these tips and tricks that will change your life on ARK and make it so much more fun to play this awesome game. And be sure to check out the link in the description for the new YouTube channel that my wife and I are building together. The two of us play console games together and we would love it if you jump over there and subscribe to that channel too. It would help us out a lot. And until next time, I hope you have a lot of fun on your own ARK adventures and we'll We'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching this video from the ARK Survival Guide. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you more great guides like this one. ARK is an amazing game, but there is so much to learn before you can really enjoy it. We are dedicated to bringing you high quality guides, tutorials, and let's play videos that are fun, helpful, clean, and suitable for the entire family. There is a tutorial in this series for everything we have done so far in this video. Check out these playlists for more episodes from this series and other guides to help you enjoy your journey on ARC.